The purpose of this presentation is to explain one method of swarm control in beekeeping. In 1935, Snellgrove published a treatise on swarm control methods, which included his own method. My goal is to follow the original text closely, but I have omitted a few minor topics. Basic Concepts of Method 1 The goal is to eliminate the swarming impulse in spring hives that lack queen cells. For hives possessing queen cells, Method 2 is used, which is not covered in this presentation. This method takes about two weeks and requires a special piece of equipment called a screen board, which the beekeeper will probably need to build themselves, and four separate operations or hive visits. The hive is manipulated to isolate the queen in one hive body, box B, and the brood and nurse bees in another, box A. Field bees originally present in A or that develop later in A are manipulated to move into B. Therefore, field bees are mostly isolated from nurse bees. This creates an artificial swarm in B, since B has a queen, almost no brood or nurse bees, and lots of field bees. Field bees in B work to store honey, not raise brood. Meanwhile in A, queen cells develop and the new queen leaves for mating. At the end of the method, A can become an independent colony or can be combined with B, or several splits can be made from A if desired. Method one, no queen cells present, but hive will likely swarm soon. End of May, colony with two brood boxes and a super. Operation one, separate the combs of the double brood chamber into two sets. Place in box A the combs with bees containing brood and in box B the remaining combs with bees which do not contain brood. See that the queen and also a comb containing a little unsealed brood are placed in the center of B. Now rebuild the hive putting box B on the floorboard an excluder on B, the super above the excluder, and box A above the super. Here is the original configuration. The super is not used in the sorting process, so put it to the side for now. Have ready two empty hive bodies in which to place the sorted frames. The basic idea of the sorting is to separate the queen from her brood. Do not shake the bees off of the frames during the sorting process. Start pulling out frames one by one. Into box A, place frames containing all forms of brood, with the youngest brood in the center of the box and older brood to the outside. It is important that some eggs or very young larvae are included in box A, since this box will be raising its own queens. If the number of frames with brood exceeds the capacity of box A, do not put those frames in B. Instead, add them to other weak hives. Into box B, place broodless frames and the queen. Place one frame containing a small quantity of unsealed brood in the center of box B. If some frames with brood were given to other hives, while filling box A, you will be short of frames for box B. In that case, complete box B with frames containing empty comb or foundation. At the end of the sorting, reassemble the hive. Going from bottom to top, there's the bottom board, then box B, the queen excluder, the super, and box A, followed by the covers. The hive is allowed to sit for three days. During that time, nurse bees move up to the brood in A. Recall that in operation one, the brood and the queen were separated. During this three day period, the nurse bees are also separated from the queen. Nurse bees consider themselves queenless 
and initiate queen cells. The small batch of young brood keeps the queen contented and she continues her laying without interruption. Screen board. This piece of equipment must be built or purchased. Today wedges are usually replaced by parallelogram shaped gates that pivot on a nail or screw. The general layout of the screen board is a 3 16 inch thick plywood panel with 1 and 1 quarter inch wide by 3 8 inch thick edging wood both on the top and bottom of the panel. Wedges are cut out on three sides, both top and bottom, leaving six openings. The wedges and openings are numbered one through six. The side facing the front of the hive is not notched. A center hole is cut, the size of a Porter B escape. However, he states that if this screen board is only to be used for swarm control, then the center hole can be round and up to three and one half inches in diameter. The hole is covered by a piece of wire mesh with openings small enough to prevent bee passage. At the end of method one, you may want to remove this mesh so it should not be permanently mounted. Snellgrove mentions that the wedges are easily lost and can be tethered to the screen board with screw eyes and string. He also states that the wedges will be easier to grip if they are made slightly wider than the edging wood and easier to remove if they are lubricated with petroleum jelly. Method one, operation two. Three days after the first operation, place the screen board under box A, that is between it and the super. Place it so that the wedge with no small entrances is toward the front of the hive. Withdraw wedge one, leaving all others in their positions in the board. This is the fourth day. By placing the screen board under box A, this operation accomplishes two things. It further isolates the nurse bees from the queen and traps field bees in A. But by removing wedge one, Field bees can escape box A and enter box B through the bottom opening, which is the opening they are accustomed to. In other words, field bees are bled or siphoned from box A to box B. In future operations, this siphoning will continue as new field bees develop in box A. Within a day or so, all field bees in A will enter B. This operation results in a strong artificial swarm in B. Nurse bees remain in A, and considering themselves queenless, finish queen cells. Queen continues to lay eggs. Lack of nurse bees makes brood nest growth slow, allowing for more honey storage. Bees in super are in contact with bees above and below them, which ensures that the super is well occupied with bees and therefore honey is readily stored in the super. Brood nest won't be full nor have many nurse bees for several weeks and by that time the stock's swarming impulse will diminish. Throughout these operations, provide food for A if needed since its foraging force is siphoned off into B. A few days after Operation 2, new field bees will have developed in A. They will fly out and return by opening 1. We want the new field bees from A to join the artificial swarm in B. This is accomplished by Operation 3. Method 1, Operation 3 on the 7th or 8th day. Replace Wedge 1 and remove Wedge 2. Remove wedge three on the opposite side of the hive. Box A is again depleted of field bees. New bees are forced to leave by opening three, but will try to return to opening one, the opening they are accustomed to. They enter opening two instead and move into B. 
Once the field bees leaving opening three use opening two, they will come and go from opening two. Activity at opening three will dwindle until a new force of field bees develops in A. A few days later, the most recently developed field bees in A will use opening three for exit and entry. These bees will soon be siphoned into B like in operations two and three. Optional. On the 12th or 13th day, sealed queen cells in A can be placed into nukes to start new colonies. This is just before the young queens emerge. This will further reduce risk of swarming in A. Method one, operation four. On the 14th or preferably 15th day, replace wedge three and remove wedge four. Remove wedge five at the back of the hive. The new field bees in A are siphoned into B by leaving from opening five and returning by opening four. New queens emerge in A. The survivor leaves by opening five for her nuptial flights. A small colored landing board can be placed under opening five to help the queen find the opening. New field bees that develop in A also use opening five. Additional supers are added as needed. Openings two and four also provide ventilation, which further reduces chances of swarming. Openings two and four will gradually become less used by the bees and can later be closed off. Optional. In the case of a late honey flow, B can again be reinforced with field bees from A. Opening six would then be used. That means that either opening one or three would need to be reused. To use one, close two a few days earlier. To use three, close four a few days earlier. Here, opening one will be used. Wedge two is replaced a couple of days before removing wedge one. Then wedge five is replaced and wedges one and six are removed. New field bees in A will leave by opening one and return by opening six. At end of honey flow, harvest the supers. To increase hives, A can be moved to its own bottom board and become an independent colony. If an increase in hive number is not desired, A can be combined with B. Harvest the supers, remove the older queen in B, remove the screen mesh in the screen board. The bees will unite peaceably. Later on, remove the screen board. Method one topics not covered in this video. Snellgrove discusses strategies for dealing with especially strong or weak colonies. In strong colonies that require three brood chambers instead of two, how to modify operation one for three boxes. Also for strong colonies, how to free up space in the brood nest. In weak colonies, how to ensure crowding of the super for stronger comb drawing and honey storage. How to deal with the loss of queens ideas on using this method for queen rearing, how to easily find the queen.